And I'm responsible for SAP's open cloud strategy, which means I'm responsible for our engagement in Cloud Foundry and, uh, and OpenStack. So a quick show of hands, who here knows SAP? Okay, so most everybody, kind of. Um, for those that don't, it's a large enterprise software company that provides software to help businesses run their business better. Um, that might sound simple, but we have over 200,000 customers in over 170 countries in, across 26 industries, so it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, what we're here to do today is talk a little bit about how we think the future of Enterprise Pass is going to develop and how Cloud Foundry can help us provide those applications across the globe. So the first thing we have to do as SAP with this global outlook is look at what's happening across the world. And one of the things that we see is this growing middle class. Um, and this middle class is going to create great new growth opportunities for our customers, but it's also going to place a tremendous strain on resources both natural resources like food and water, but also public services, uh, healthcare, et cetera. As this uh, middle class starts to grow, they become more connected through social networks, um, also devices that are gonna become more connected on the network like your refrigerator, your washing machine, even the clothes you wear. Through all of this interconnected kind of um, world, there's gonna be just this explosion in data. And we're gonna need to use big data analytics to figure out how to unlock the hidden potential in that data. The third thing is with mobile devices, everybody is working differently and untethered everywhere. You can improve expense report from the pool. I know, I did it on Sunday um, with my kids, and it just changes the way that people work. So we need to figure out how to rethink the future so that you can provide these business applications in real time. And SAP's been doing this for a while now. We created SAP HANA. And SAP HANA is a way of collapsing the stack and creating highly efficient, real-time data product processing. Business processes that used to take 30, 30 hours now take 30 seconds and enable you to really do your business in real time. Um, so to recap briefly, we have these disruptive trends and technologies that are changing the way that business applications work for our, both our customers and for us. And what we need to do then is work with our partners across the globe to figure out how we can manage this change and create applications that are actually going to benefit our customers with their diverse needs. And the way that we do that is with a process called design thinking. Design thinking is a way of creating an application that is both desirable, feasible, and viable. Um, I could spend a whole hour on that, but I'm not going to. The, the, the point here is that we work with our partners to figure out how to make a product market fit for each of the apps and the new roles across all of the different um, uh, the diverse needs of our customers. Finally, we also work with our partners uh, in a different way. We work with our partners um, to actually develop the software components that enable these applications to happen. And this is why we're here today. So, um, so when I started working on open source at SAP in 2005, it was forbidden. You know, don't drink it, don't touch it, don't smell it, certainly don't put it in product. But we've changed our best practices now almost 180 degrees. And now, if there's a, a mature open source product with a healthy ecosystem, it's best practice to use it and avoid the not invented here mentality. Um, so we're now ready to take the next step. And, and we're, that's why we're here today to, to sponsor the, the Cloud Foundry Foundation as a platinum sponsor. And, um, we really look forward to working with all of the other sponsors, all of the ecosystem here to make Cloud Foundry an even bigger success. And now I'm going to let Dirk uh, up on stage to talk more about HANA and how Cloud Foundry and HANA can work together. So thanks, Steve. You can hear me, yeah. Uh, so we thought 20-minute keynote presentation is pretty long, so we wanted to split it up and have two presenters on stage. Uh, I'm Dirk Basenach. I'm running the product management for SAP's application platforms, where our platform as a service product is part of it. Um, because we are new kids on the block, uh, I thought it's, it's uh, interesting for you to give you just a short overview about the technology stack we are running, uh, tell you a little bit uh, what we are doing in the cloud and how we want to engage with Cloud Foundry. So now we come to a nice little software piece, our HANA platform. Several years ago, we saw a significant change in the uh, hardware market, so memory even on a large scale with se uh, several terabytes um, became available in an affordable way. And on the other side, lots of cores were sitting 
uh, were on one plate, which allowed massive parallel processing. So that was a time where we started the implementation of an in-memory database uh, where all the operational data of a system is always kept in memory. So we only use uh, uh, traditional databases for archiving or cold storage. Uh, other than that, the data is always accessible in memory and available. We implemented a column-based approach, which gives the benefits compared to a row-based database that you can reduce the data that you need to manage significantly. Uh, taking our productive ERP system we were running in SAP uh, as an example, uh, we had around seven terabyte of data in the system. With a change to the HANA platform, we now have less than 300 gigabyte running in the system. As well, with having all the data available uh, in memory on the database layer, we are able to push down the application logic uh, near to the database layer and by that, we achieved the uh, significant performance improvement Steve mentioned. We avoid buffering on the application layer if you have a 3 tier architecture. Uh, data duplication is not necessary because you always operate on original data. But HANA is not only a database. We have additional services and engines as part of the platform. Uh, for example, geospatial engine, a rules engine, uh, text mining functionality is available. Analytical engines for predictive planning uh, are available there as well. So from that point of view, it's fair to say it's a complete application platform where I can build applications upon. Now looking at the cloud side. Um, starting on the, on the left, you see still we have, of course, uh, lots of customers that are running uh, our SAP systems in on-premise space. Some customers have, uh, our big ones, have really complex system landscapes with several hundred of systems they are managing. Two years ago, uh, we offered our customers to migrate their systems in our data centers to our data centers. We, together with the customer, upgrade to the HANA database to the newest version that can benefit from this, this platform, and then we manage these systems for our customers. That's what we call Manage Cloud as a Service. As well, uh, since several years, we offer a, a line of business applications which are true software as a service applications in different areas, um, HR, CRM, finance, supply chain management with our Ariba solution, but as well more kind of social stuff uh, with our GEM solution. And in the middle, we have our development platform, which we call the HANA Cloud Platform which is a platform as a service solution that follows open standards. So we offer their Java technology and JavaScript technology to implement applications either new from scratch. So we see a lot of interest from our customers in the area of Internet of Things um, to, to manage device, thousands of devices that need to connect to a cloud solution. But as well, what we see very often is customers come to us and say, look, we have to innovate. We have to bring new applications to our users but we, don't, we want to touch our system landscape as less as possible uh, because those upgrades mean always a lot of work and testing. Um, so with the cloud approach, um, that's a very nice approach to solve this, uh, this problem. The customer just opens up the API in your on-premise landscape and new applications are built on top of our HANA Cloud platform. They can innovate much faster um, on this platform, bring new versions, uh, every several weeks or even days, just develop it, test it, and activate it, and it's available for the users. So now to Cloud Foundry. So with all the sponsors and the contributors, uh, we see, we think Cloud Foundry has really a good chance to become the de facto standard of a platform as a service offering. And that's, of course, something we want to benefit from from SAP. As well, we want to um, use Cloud Foundry uh, to not only deploy our platform in a public cloud environment, but, but as well deploy via Cloud Foundry a platform on a private, uh, private cloud or on even the data centers uh, of the partners or customers going forward. And we see, of course, a lot of interest in the community. Cloud Foundry stack is growing step by step, where we want to contribute a benefit, of course, uh, upon as well. On the other side, as Steve mentioned, we are working with a lot of partners. We have a big ecosystem. For example, we have, um, for HANA, we have a startup program where even very small companies start building new applications on HANA. We have 1,500 partners, startups now in this program. So we think we can 
attract those partners to the Cloud Foundry stack as well going forward. What do we want to contribute as the next steps? Uh, we are running cloud applications since uh, almost 10 years. Um, our customers are running the solutions globally in different industry, different countries with lots of legislative or regulative re uh, requirements they have there. They have uh, high uh, demand for management of the solution, for availability of the solution. So that's something uh, we think we can bring value into the community with our experience we have in this section. We will deploy Cloud Foundry in our SAP data center step by step. Um, and as a next step, as I said, provide Cloud Foundry, uh, Cloud Foundry stack to our partners uh, in other data centers as well. And finally, of course, we want to contribute our key technologies to the stack, um, build an uh, integration of, of our components that they can be used uh, out, of the, out of Cloud Foundry. One key component, of course, is our HANA platform. We already have available a service broker. Uh, we are version, uh, working on version two currently to uh, overcome some restrictions the current implementation has. Uh, we implemented a Node.js driver, uh, um, database driver for HANA that we open sourced on GitHub uh, that can be freely used. And currently we're working on a Ruby on Rails active record implementation for HANA as well. So from that you see as well, we want to open up to new technology stacks like Node and Ruby and make it available uh, in the SAP platform as a service approach as well. Finally, the high level picture that we are targeting at is on the bottom you see the cloud infrastructure and we are committed to align our cloud infrastructure and the OpenStack technology and with that being able to be more open to run on any kind of data centers in the future we still, of course, will have available our HANA technology and HANA platform and the services we implemented in our HANA cloud platform today. And we will make available cloud, server, cloud foundry services uh, to our platform offering as well. Um, one example I want to mention, and there will be a session tomorrow from the Hypers colleagues as well. Hypers is an e-commerce product we have in SAP. Uh, we have, our customers are running more than two and a half thousand stores currently with this solution in over 40 countries. Uh, one of the biggest wholesale distributor runs 500,000 orders per day on this solution. The Hypers team started to implement a commerce as a service product that natively sits on Cloud Foundry. This will be one of our first proof points that we mean it serious with Cloud Foundry when we deliver this solution pretty soon. Uh, so and, uh, there we will gain a lot of experience in the Cloud Foundry environment as well. So with that, I want to thank you. If you have more questions, there's a booth on this side uh, where we can have a talk later on. And thank you for your attention.